This video lecture is on nutrition through adulthood. Beginning around age 30, the purpose for cell creation changes. Cell metabolism slows down, and now you're creating cells to replace cells versus increasing the total number of cells. This is also when you typically transition from um, your family of origin. You de develop what career you're going to do, and you decide to make reproductive decisions. You also establish or refine your eating style. Well, 76% of American adults report consuming less than five fruits and vegetables a day. Growth is going to be completed in late teens for women and early 20s for men. What affects your um, growth pattern is going to be your body weight and your lean body mass. We tend to move from uh, being more active to less active, like uh, playing after school sports to now um, you know, working in an office. After age 18, your calcium and phosphorus needs are going to decline because your skeletal growth is almost complete. However, calcium and iron are still a concern for women because we tend to restrict our intake of food during dieting, and these two nutrients um, tend to not get consumed in sufficient amounts. <clears throat> then the, between the ages of 40 and 60, chronic illnesses like heart disease, hypertension, diabetes commonly begin to develop. So you want to establish healthy food and exercise habits by decreasing total fat and increasing fruits and vegetables if you haven't already. You want to focus on positive dietary patterns and regular exercise because their energy needs decrease an estimated 5% per decade after age 40. Therefore your calorie needs are going to decrease, um, but your protein needs stay the same. This makes it harder to maintain an acceptable BMI. Your iron needs are going to decrease to 18 milligrams if you are, or excuse me, are going to decrease to 8 milligrams. And we're going to focus on making sure you get nutrient dense foods as well as lower fat protein food sources, so like lean meats or um, using uh, animal, or excuse me, non animal sources of protein. And we want to make sure we're getting enough fiber from fruits, vegetables, and grains to help with diverticulosis and constipation issues. All right, so when we get into the, this age group, calcium needs are going to, inc um, the adequate intake is going to be 1,200 milligrams. So you want to think of what are good calcium and vitamin D sources. Uh, we want to monitor height, weight, BMI, and your serum calcium levels. And it can take years to develop um, osteoporosis. That's why we talked about, um, you know, in the teenage years, we have it being 1,300 milligrams because we're really trying to make those bones as dense as possible. So they look more like this when we're 60 versus like this. Um, and so, again, uh, milk is obviously a good source of calcium. It also is good in protein, vitamin D, and potassium. Remember those non-dairy sources of calcium because maybe your patient is lactose intolerant. So we can do those green leafy vegetables, small fish with bones, legumes. Also using functional foods like tofu and orange juice, um, bread and soy milk can all have calcium added to them. In addition to increasing your risk for osteoporosis, low calcium intake is also going to increase your risk for colon cancer and hypertension. This right here is just kind of showing you again how to um, increase um, bioavailability and what are things that decrease bioavailability. So we want to increase this when possible and obviously aging there's nothing you can do about that but there's other things that we can do like um, not having a sedentary lifestyle. In the United States over 5 million people have osteoporosis and 35 million more are at risk um, or are diagnosed with osteopenia. You can see who is at risk right here. Uh, because of the possible serious ramifications of chronic deficiency, we may need to use supplements. And so remember, you want to look at how do we take what kinds and what has the most calcium per pill, which we've talked about before. So um, compliance is necessary. You want to take it with meals. Um, calcium is always going to be combined with another substance to make the tablet. So there's usually um, calcium citrate, calcium lactate, or um, calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate will have about 500 to 600 milligrams of calcium per tablet. Calcium citrate and lactate have about 200 milligrams. 
Your body really can't absorb more than 500 milligrams at any one time, so we're going to need to take um, uh, one pill or more throughout the day to get up to the, um, the necessary requirement. What this graph right here is showing you is the blue is male and the pink is female, and, you can see, and then this is age, and this is like uh, bone density. So you can see not only do we never even get our bones as dense as males, hence why being a female automatically puts you at risk for osteoporosis, but then you can see that the gap even um, it gets wider. So a possible nursing diagnosis we could do would be imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, related to inadequate take of calcium and vitamin D, as evidenced by patient states, I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't eat dairy and I don't like greens. This slide right here is just showing you what are some of the normal aging effects um, and what the nutritional implications are. So for example, um, uh, decreasing in muscle mass means we don't need as many calories. Um, let's see. Um, in the GI, you um, it's normal as we get older to decrease our pepsin and um, hydrochloric acid secretion and also decrease our production of intrinsic factor, which we need to absorb B12. So you can see how that's going to become a nutrient of concern. So go ahead and read over this. And we'll move into the older years, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So really, the level of wellness is reflected by the health behaviors, and we really want to encourage strength training because that will help um, maintain uh, stamina as well as uh, lean body mass. The life expectancy in the United States has dramatically increased. You know, in the early 1900s, it was less than half of Americans would live past 65. Now over 80% do. Again, in this group, we're going to see calorie needs decrease, secondary to decrease in a metabolic rate and decrease in use. So bioavailability of vitamins, minerals, and protein changes in older adults because, like I said before, decrease in pepsin and hydrochloric acid secretion. More than 80% suffer from arthritis, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, or some combination. However, a greater percentage eat five or more fruits or vegetables a day. Half of older adults have vitamin and mineral intake less than recommended. So specifically vitamin D because their synthesis um, decreases because, uh, through the skin because it thins. So you can see after age 70, the AI is going to increase to 15 micrograms. B12, we talked about how um, the risk for pernicious anemia is going to increase because the intrinsic factor is required for absorption. Also, prolonged use of antacids or proton pump inhibitors can decrease absorption of B12. So we're going to need the older adult to supplement it with um, either a, a pill or eating fortified foods to meet their higher RDA. Zinc is one I want to talk about because the marginal deficiency can alter the sensitivity to taste receptors. And so things will taste more bitter and sour and less sweet and salty. So we want to make sure it's not a marginal deficiency in zinc causing um, taste changes. Um, we're also going to usually supplement um, calcium like we've already talked about. This is just showing many factors that can lead to inadequate nutrition. It is not just simply they're not getting enough to eat. You know, for socially, food is a means of giving and receiving love, friendship, and belonging. So eating alone can cause a disinterest in food. Alcoholism in the older adult. Malnutrition um, is commonly found because excessive amounts of alcohol are going to diminish your appetite and decrease absorption, as well as um, depression. Malnutrition is commonly found in depression with elderly, but malnutrition may also cause um, depression. Then we can also see economics is going to be a big uh, concern as well about you know, 10% of older adults live under the uh, poverty line. And then physiologically, there's lots of things going on, such as polypharmacy, that can cause um, inadequate nutrition. So this right here is the modified My Pyramid for Older Adults. You can see at the bottom, they've added um, older adult-friendly activities. They've also added eight cups of water a day. Um, and then, for example, in the grains, they're picking um, there's lots of whole wheat grains in here. And then the very top here, we have a flag that shows um, vitamin B12, vitamin, or excuse me, yeah, vitamin D, and calcium on the flag because those are three nutrients of priority concern on the older adult. 
All right, now we're talking about the oldest years, the 80s and 90s. Nutrient needs basically stay the same, but again, calorie um, intake needs to decrease because pro um, but protein needs are going to remain the same. So nutrient density keeps becoming very more and more important. So in 2012, there was 2.8 million households with seniors experiencing food insecurity. 1.1 million households composed of seniors living alone experience food insecurity. Uh, so about 8.4% of all seniors um, were food inse insecure. And this number is in, projected to increase by 50% when the youngest of the baby boom generation reaches age 60 in 2025. They're more likely to be food insecure if they live in a southern state, are younger, live with a grandchild, are African American or Hispanic. Malnutrition and underweight become concerned at this age group. Up to 20% of community dwelling older adults are malnourished. Dehydration um, risk dramatically increases, especially in African Americans and men. Um, the kidneys aren't able to concentrate urine as much. We also see things, there might be another physiological thing, like they may, the osteoarthritis or stroke can make food preparation more physically demanding. And then again, we talked about, I've mentioned polypharmacy already, so illness and medications can reduce appetite and nutrient availability. Supplements tend to have a positive impact on nutritional adequacy for adults 51 years of age or older. Uh, they were... There is a small but consistent weight gain um, um, along with a positive effect on mortality and a shorter length of hospital stay in older adults who receive a nutritional supplement. Here are some factors that can affect nutrition from the sensory. So we can see taste. Um, there is naturally a decrease in um, taste receptors. Uh, but it also can be a psychological um, change that can affect the pleasure of food. Your ability to detect um, and identify odors begins to decline at around age 30. Emotions and smell overlap in the brain. So institutionalized older adults don't cook, and they a lot of times don't have the ability to use smell as an appetite stimulant. So what are some things we can do? We can include um, use flavor enhancers, try to do concentrated uh, flavors. Again, assess for zinc deficiency to make sure that's not the cause. Tooth loss is not a normal part of aging. Um, primary is going to actually be because of periodontal disease, and you can see reasons why. Um, this can lead to poor nutrition, even aspiration pneumonia. So as a nurse, you want to make sure the dentures fit properly. You want to reassess them with weight loss, because again, this can decrease chewing ability, which makes under and malnutrition a concern. Constipation. Less than three bowel movements a week is considered constipation. About 60% of community elders use laxatives, and there are many physiological, function, mechanical, psychological, and pharmacological factors that you're going to want to assess your patient for. You can then look in your book um, on Box 13.4 for some strategies to um, specific interventions to overcome um, a decreased sense of taste and smell, social interaction, food activity, activity presenting food attractively, excuse me, and providing outside support. So go ahead and look in your book. This would be a really great information.